He's the executive producer of The Witcher 3 uh, with CD Projekt Red. Now, um, The Witcher 3 is a bigger game than The Witcher 2. Now, how, how much bigger are we talking? Uh, 30 times bigger in terms of land size, land mass, and uh, everything else is TBD, basically. But yeah, much bigger. Oh, okay. So, um, we were looking at the, uh, the world is much more dynamic, much more uh, NPC integration. Now, um, Skyrim did things like scripting. It was just scripted. You see people, they're hammering away. They were doing this. They were doing that. It was very sterile. Um, does this game do things differently? How, how dynamic really is uh, NPC interaction with each other and with Geralt as well? Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, there are scripted things happening in the background. Communities are, are placed and they're doing things sort of autonomously. But they're probably going to react in a more realistic way to what Geralt's doing inside, inside villages and different communities. And, uh, based on like your decisions you make in the different communities, those communities will change their disposition towards you in different ways. So I think that's um, the difference. And if, if, if they dislike Geralt, will they take action against him? Will they prevent him from doing things, certain quests, things like that? Uh, that could be, they could change prices in, in shops for him, potentially. They, oh, right. could, they could close doors that he couldn't get into. Uh, they could just generally avoid him. Um, and, and the reverse, you know, if they like him, they can sort of adjust prices and open opportunities up for the character that he otherwise wouldn't have. So, so if someone hates Geralt, could there potentially be a quest from that person who really dislikes him? So maybe someone who might want to betray him, as well as extra quest options for people who do like him and do That's like him. That's a good idea. It's a good idea, but it's <laughs> not in there yet. Uh, I don't know if it is or not, actually. Well, you so, can have that one already. So, uh, if it gets in there, you can't take credit for it. Cause somebody else has probably already thought of it. But, but you're uh, probably right. No, there's going to be there's going to be knock-on quests based on dispositions of communities. I just don't know a specific, like a specific example. But yeah, it's a good idea. So um, there are there are, uh, is this going to be a, a another game about kings? Are there going to be kingdoms? I mean, there's different land masses. Are they owned by different people? Do those people fight? Is there any integration there? Well, the there there is like a uh, some big event happening in the background, basically. So there are kings involved. Um, uh, so as you know, Charles Dance is playing one of these kings. So yeah, there are kings, but I'm not going to reveal to you what's happening in the story, but there, there are definitely some, uh, some bigger sort of world events happening with kingdoms. Yeah. Okay, so there's a there's a sort of detective mode we were shown where you know the, everything goes dark and, and things are red. So um, how how integrated into the quest system is that? You know, looking for clues and things like that. Is that is that going to be on many quests or is that just one a small part of the game they want to show? No, it's a it's a major mechanic in the game. So it's going to be in uh, probably a lot of the monster hunting type quests. You're going it's, to be it's, so, so monster hunting is one you know type of quest you know uh, the, with the different set of quests and. Um, Things like uh, world exploration, is there are other things to really explore, really find? Are there like jokes, you know, Easter eggs, things like that? Should people really go out and explore? I mean, because things that, you know, people say that Skyrim was huge, but it had the depth of the puddle. Yeah. But what does The Witcher 3 do different to Skyrim that makes it a real organic open It's funny, world? we're having like contests in the studio about who can come up with the best Easter eggs to put in the game. So there's like there's like oh, right. loads and loads of stuff that we're trying to put in. Any, any homage to any other games or anything like that? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. So, um, when it comes to the, the visuals, you'd obviously push things further. Um, the new engine, has it been prepared for uh, Xbox One and the PS4 in mind as well, or, or was that something you thought about later? Has it got longevity for those? Um, uh, as those soon systems? as we stopped to work on the Xbox version of Witcher 2, we started preparing the engine for sort of cross-platform. All right, okay. Yeah. Right, so let's talk about the combat. I mean, the Witcher 2, uh, one of the criticisms I get from people is that the combat wasn't great. It was very difficult because it was quite, it wasn't, it wasn't as tactile. This looks much more tactile. So what, what combat changes have you, have you made and really what inspired those combat changes? Uh, it's the main thing is they want to slow down combat a little bit so it felt more realistic. I think that's like the, the, the main vision for it, slow it down, make it feel more realistic. And make it more tactile in terms of, in terms of like if you, if you press a button, you, it's, it equates to a certain kind of animations. Before you could press a button and you would have a cycle of animations. So now it's animation connected with, with a button and, the, and then you can, you can uh, do things in a certain sequence of course and, and trigger more animations but you can always stop what you're doing, go into a parry. So it's much more, 
you're actually seeing on on screen what you're actually doing with your controls. So, it's and so from what I gather, there's no combos or anything like that. Any uh, boost for that sort of thing? With combo is it? Is no, no, it's not not very arcadey at all. It's no. much more sort of realistic type combat. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what do you think about the the game length? How how many hours are people going to spend in the game? If they're you know they go off the track a bit, you know, stick to the main quest mostly, but you know if they get veer away sometimes. How many hours do you know? Uh, well, we're shooting at about 100 hours of gameplay. Is yeah. that, you know, for the casual and hard game? Okay, well, well, if you do everything, it's going to be more than 100 hours, yeah. of course. So it's, uh, we'll see, though. You know, it's actually still, we're still in pre alpha We're still trying to build it out. But 100 hours is kind of uh, the, the goal for... Yeah. I th you could probably get through the game faster. You know, hardcore gamers, they might skip all the uh, extraneous material and do everything faster, potentially. But I'm not sure how fast it's going to be yet. Um, but for the casual, sort of standard player, 100 hours is what we're kind of going for. And what do you think about DLC? Is there going to be extra content laid on top? Because I know CD Projekt Red aren't huge for their uh, DLC so far. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can't talk about that yet. But okay. we're, we're, we're definitely going to do something uh, probably pretty big in terms right. of uh, um, follow-up. The, uh, the release date? I can't say that either yet. Yeah. Sometime next year, yeah. I thought I'd trick you into that one. Yeah. Sometime next year. Well, that was great. Thank you for talking to us. Okay. We can't wait. Thanks, Thanks a lot. man.